Bayo Limerick. Or, How to Destroy Anglo-Saxon Literature in 1087. <laughs> a monster did merriment vanish, as many a kinsman did vanish. And from Hrothgar's fair hall, when Grendel did call to pick up some fresh breakfast on it. <laughs> Their state was soon starry indeed, a grimness born out of greed. But this was not caused by the monster's fierce paws, but hangovers and too much mead. A call that went out far and wide, please help say these things, hairy hide. From the monster's most rude, choice of quick takeout food, fresh viking, raw boils, or fried. <laughs> Everything's better fried. So Beowulf rode across the sea to help answer Hrothgar's sad plea, to lend them his aid and his bright shining blade in making some monster puree. Now Beowulf, being a smarty, watched the fames as they feasted most hearty. He lay on the floor while the Norsemen did snore, and Grendel came crashing to party. The hall, which had been gendarmeless, learned the value of not being alarmless. Woke to battle most grim, as foes tore limb from limb, and Grendel was rendered more harmless. <laughs> the monster that fled in a buck the green glowing lake where he bumped. Bray Babel gave chase with the men of that place to see to it that Grendel stayed sunk. Danger lurked near the beneath the lake seeming calm, where a fresh sword had met Theo's palm. But he did not know when the lair of his bow lived the monsters now mad, pissed off mom. <laughs> Mrs. Grendel soon met her end, as the fierce gay hot prince he did rend her poor body in twain. <laughs> then he did it again, just in case she heard death did pretend. The survivors returned to the hall, cleaned the blood and for me did call, lifted many a horn till the days too early morn, where they fell as the drink claimed them all. <laughs>